Where did you start? What market did you start in? I uh, started virtually in Memphis, um, just because you know I, I saw a lot of other big time wholesalers going there, so I thought that was a good place to start virtually. Yeah. What are you talking <laughs> about? You don't even live in Memphis. Yeah. Exactly. Have you ever? Have you even been to Memphis? No. No. Never, never. in your life. Nah. Yeah. But you're All calling virtual. up property owners that are on a list of tired landlords, and you're locking nope. up deals without even meeting them. No, no, I've met one seller out of all of the deals. So. One seller. Welcome to the Wholesaling Inc. podcast. I'm your host, Brent Daniels, Mr. TTP, Mr. Talk to People. And I am telling you what, this conversation is going to be absolutely bananas. For under $500 a month, a full time college student, 21 years old, was able since uh, for about six months, eight months in this business has closed $110,000 in deals. And we're going to find out exactly how he did it. It is my pleasure to introduce to the Rhino Tribe from Richmond, Virginia, Owen Scott. Owen, say hello to everybody. Hey, everybody. Thanks, for, thanks Brian, for having me on here. This is, it's an incredible story. So I want to jump right into the meat and potatoes here, put you in the hot seat, Owen. Um, 13 deals, $110,000. You started with, with really just, just getting out there and, and getting on the phones and talking to people. So how are you finding the, how'd you start and how long did it take you to get your first deal? Um, I started cold calling late January, early February of this year. Um, it, so it took and that first one closed March, uh, beginning of March. So it was about 30 days, a little over 30 days. Yeah. So, From the time that you started. Yeah. Yeah. This must be the greatest list of property owners to call <laughs> of all time, right? Where yeah. did you start? What market did you start in? I uh, started virtually in Memphis um, just because, you know, I, I saw a lot of other big time wholesalers going there. So I thought that was a good place to start virtually. Um, it was just a pulled, I think, of maybe 1,500 tired landlord leads. And, you know, it, the guy said, you know, everything's for sale. And, you know, we went into everything and it <laughs> panned out pretty well. So, yeah. I love it. And explain for everybody that just found our podcast, what does a tired landlord's list mean? Yeah. So a tired landlord is basically, you know, somebody that does not live in the property. It's usually somebody who's trying, who's renting it out on a monthly basis. Um, and I think that it's somebody who's owned it for, I think it's at least 15 years, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so they've, you know, odds are they have a lot of equity. Um, there may be a chance that they have multiple properties, some that might not be performing as well as others. Um, tenants might be giving them trouble, so it might be time to kind of move on from the burden of having to deal with it. Now, do you check for equity? And just uh, let me just clarify a couple of things uh, when, when Owen's throwing out um, some words that might not be familiar, because some people don't know what equity is. Equity is the difference between what the property is worth and what they owe on it, right? The debt that's on that property. And what we're looking for, typically, we're looking for 30 to 50%, just depending on the price point. Obviously, the lower the, the fixed up value of the property, uh, the more equity that you want uh, to be able to work with, because, you know, typically the repair costs eat up a lot of the profits if there's not a tremendous amount of equity equity. So um, Owen was going after properties that had a lot of equity. They've been owned for a long time. We know from from just looking at statistics that the average property owner owns their properties for seven years. So we actually, Owen, just uh, we, we pull ours uh, at 10 years of ownership. We want mm-hmm. those people that really at 15 ownership, 15 years, that's even better. Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously, the longer they own them, um, the more Uh, potential they are for being dated. And then you said something about a property performing. What does that mean? What do you mean performing? So, I mean, at the end of the day, the, the reason there's only a few reasons you want to rental it's for cash flow, tax incentives, or depreciation. Those are the big ones. And, you know, after some point, the the depreciation might not be worth it. Um, You know, the, the cash flow might be good until somebody doesn't pay. And if you're self-managing, it's a pain to evict somebody. It's, 
you might some of the landlords I speak to they coll- physically collect cash every month. So, you know, when a month slips and your cash flow goes negative, that's you know that means it's not performing. And when it happens month after month, you know that's that's something that really weighs on you, right? So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you know, a lot of uh, I would say most investors that own rentals, it's kind of like their hobby. You know what I mean? It's not like full time. I'm going to build the portfolio. I'm going to build a company around it. I'm going to have my own property managers. I'm going to have somebody making sure that the property is in good working order and always staying up to date and all these things. No, most investors, shockingly, it's a hobby. It's, you know, well, I had this house and I, I bought another house, so I kept this house and I rented it out. Or somebody told them, hey, it's a good, op- good idea to uh, buy real estate. Um, so they go out and they buy real estate, right? And they buy one or two. And that's what you typically find. It's the people that own one, two to really four rentals is kind of the mm-hmm. cap, four yeah. rentals. And, um, and that's, that, that, that's like the bread and butter. The one when they own more than that, sometimes, you know, they're, they're really savvy and they've got their act together and they've got processes, but the yep. ones that own under four rentals is the sweet spot. So exactly. you called up this owner, they say everything's for sale, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and then what do you do? And then I was just, you know, we, we both just like laugh cause this is probably, you know, I, I would usually call from like three to 7 p.m. every day. So this was, I think it was, I remember it was like 6.45. I was like towards the end. So I was tired. You can tell he he was done with work. So we were both tired. And we were like, you know, I just basically said, are you actually interested in selling? And he was like, you know, this was the one I might be interested in selling just because I have better rentals. And, you know, we kind of just went through it, went through condition and occupancy, all that stuff. And Um, market rent was like 1200, he was getting 500 and, you know, he knew that. So he was just kind of like, maybe it's time to, um, you know, get this one off the books. And, um, I talked to him at 645 and I had a contract in hand the next morning at 9am. So yeah, it's not that easy. Owen, (laughs) come on. (laughs) What are you talking about? You don't even live in Memphis. Yeah. Have you ever, have you even been to Memphis? No, no. Never never. in your life? No, yeah. But you're calling up property owners that are on a list of tired landlords and you're locking Mm -hmm. up deals without even meeting them? No, no. I've met one seller out of all of the deals. One seller. You talk to this landlord. He's getting $500 and the rental rates are $1,200? Yeah. So this property is in rough shape. Because yeah. if, it, if it wasn't, he'd be getting way more in rents. Typically, he, yeah. he he probably rented it out to somebody that's been there a long time. Yeah, the long term tenant, um, and he just didn't care to you know raise rents. It just was a because after a while he had so much. I don't. It wasn't free and clear, but it was very close to being free and clear. Um, so he was you know he just didn't care enough to have the vacancy and do the work and. I think the end buyer said it needed around 30 grand worth of work. And it's, it was a not so big house too. So needed some work. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, and I feel like I'm talking to somebody that's been in this business for like 10 years and you've been (laughs) in this thing for like eight months. How did you get so show everybody, teach everybody, how do you get so caught up to speed with all the terminology and all of the, uh, all the scripts and what to say to property owners so that you feel confident making these calls. Because the fact is, if you didn't feel confident, if you were totally worried about it, um, you would have never, you would have never pressed go. You would have never called that person and, and had that conversation. So did you, did you do a lot of research before you started this or did you just jump in and and learn as you go? No, I mean, I I did like basic research um, in the sense that, you know, I I figured out what ARV is. I figured out what MAO means, stuff like that. But, you know, it was really just figure out, okay, this is before the new year. I remember I figured out how much I can spend per month and how I want to do it. And, you know, I just kind of, I got on the phones and you know, I, I remember after every time I was, I was like, man, I still get nervous before I start dialing. Right. But you know, it, it, nothing will get done unless either somebody like somebody in your business needs to be on the phones at all times. Yep. Right. So, 
you know, I met, did I mess up? Sure. So many times, right. There's, you know, you're never perfect on the phones, but if, when you find that one seller, they don't care if you accidentally like miss say a word or, you know, stuff like that, because motivation is motivation. Yeah. right? So yeah, that's yeah, kind of, I, I think, I think people watch too many movies and they're like, yeah. they have to be yeah. like the slick closer exactly. that knows how to go in there and yeah. see the right things at the right. right times. And then all of a sudden, you know, they, they, yeah. they make millions type of thing. And it's not true at mm-hmm. all. You can no, stumble exactly. and fumble and bumble your way through as long as you've got a good tone of voice, as long as you're there to be of service to yeah. the property owner that you're speaking to, and as long as you, you be honest to them, uh, mm-hmm. honest with them, right? You know, Absolutely. I'm just getting started in this business. I'm excited about it. Uh, I saw your property. I thought it would be a good fit for something that, uh, that we'd want to approach you with an offer. And so mm-hmm. here we are. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to, it's not like a fake it till you make it type of thing. No, it's just, as long as that you get that question out of, you know, are are you interested in selling? You know, that's (laughs) everything from there just becomes a normal conversation, right? You just kind of talk to, you literally just talk to people and you know, nobody knows it better than you, but (laughs) my man, I love it. I love it. But I mean, like, how did you, how, how did you feel? Um, did you use scripts? Did you call with, with intention, uh, of knowing exactly once they pick up the phone, what you're going to say? Yeah, I would, um, I kind of use like a blended version of, uh, your TTP script and Chris Jefferson script. Awesome. Um, yeah. So it was just kind of very simple. I just, you know, you like everything else you introduce yourself and just get to as quick as you can just get to that punchline of, you know, are you open to selling this property? if it made sense, right? You're not, you don't need to introduce yourself and who you are and what you do for a minute. You, you know, politely and professionally introduce yourself as somebody who is just curious and get the question out and then it'll go from there. And 99.9% of the time it'll be a no. And, you know, this business is worth it because those 0.1% of the time, you know, it's a high margin return, right? So yeah. I mean, I mean statistically, it's yeah. 99.5 because there you, you get one yeah. deal per 200 conversations is exactly. the average. Yeah, and so if you look at that, that's a half percent. So mm-hmm. you have to be yeah. able to have that rhino thick skin to deal with that yeah. 99.5% rejection. It's not even as bad as you think it is. It's not like people getting mad and screaming at you and threatening you. It's nah, just it's, people politely yeah. telling you no, as yeah. long as you're using a good tone of voice. And they're like, no, exactly. I don't want to sell right now. I don't mm-hmm. want, you know, I'm getting a lot of these calls. I just bought the property, whatever. That's most of it if you're going with a really good tone of voice and, um, And you're not trying to like pressure too hard or or talk to too aggressively. So that's phenomenal. You're 21 years old. Mm -hmm. You just made over six figures. I -hmm. know before this, uh, this, um, podcast started that your budget is under $2,500 a month for Mm -hmm. your expenses. So you're keeping most of these, a lot of this money, uh, a lot of these deals. And so wh- why are you, why are you in college? I mean, what's the point? Is this going to be your business? Or are you just, is this just an experiment? Is this like a, like your senior year thesis paper that you're writing here or, or what, what's going on? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, my, I've invested so much of my own time and, you know, I'm fortunate enough to where my parents, you know, have, have saved up enough to where I, I'm not going to graduate with any debt, which, you know, I'm very thankful for. So, you know, I think at the end of the day, I do see the, some value in seeing it through and, you know, cause you make a lot of connections in college too. Sure. Um, you know, I have private money lenders that are alumni of my college. So, I mean, just stuff like that. And, you know, and to answer your second question, you know, I, this is fully my intention to make this my main thing. Once I graduate, um, I'm actually planning on graduating a semester early in order to get to the business full time sooner. Um, you know, so it's, it's definitely a full push to really, you know, make it my thing and, you know, push it to where it's, you know, five, 10 deals a month within, within the next year for sure. Yeah. I love it. And do you, is there any overlapping of the things that you're learning in real life business, uh, versus, you know, what you're learning in the classroom? Um, I wish it was more. That's one thing I would think. Yeah. That's the one thing I would say. Um, 
funny enough, I think, you know, I've had to take like accounting classes and even just like stuff like that. I mean, it's so applicable, right? You know, that stuff, it's for sure. I mean, I've taken strategy classes and all that. And it's just, I think business can be dumbed down to, especially if you're doing outbound marketing is like, how much volume are you doing? How many people are you contacting? And what's your network? That's all. I mean, yep. that's what I boil it down to. That's how I track my metrics. And, you know, so I'd say somewhat, but, you know, I think the real life stuff is, you know, it's unteachable until you, like you said, until you get told no 199 times, right? <laughs> and so, you know, until you get slapped in the face by all these calls, right? So, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and listen, you're absolutely right. You make unbelievable connections in college. Mm -hmm. um, is it applicable for an entrepreneur? Mm, probably not for what we're doing, um, mm -hmm. but at least it's uh, you. You are there, and you're 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 looking at all these other successful people, and they don't want to do this business, but they do want to be in real estate. That's yeah. where you make those private money lender exactly. connections, which is phenomenal. I love yeah. that you went that route. That that is great. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, listen, you <laughs> the experience is going to be a much better professor than. Uh, a professor sitting in a classroom when it comes to this yeah. business. It just is. And, yeah. but, I, but you know, I, I got a college degree. I never used it, but I was, I was thankful that I did, you know, mm -hmm. my, my, the, the people that work in my company, my best friends are, were my college roommates. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's a, it's a weird, it's, it, it's weird how that all works out, but um, you know, you certainly don't need to go to college to start this business. And no. if you're in college, you can certainly do both. And Owen yeah. is a perfect example of that. So let's break down a deal. Let's break yeah. down, uh, whatever deal you want it, okay. but, uh, I want it, I, I want to really get nitty gritty into it. We kind of started off with your first deal and that was great, but I'm going to even pull this one uh, apart even more. So let's get yeah. into it. Um, yeah, I'll do a recent one. It was actually a whole tail. Um, it was my first whole tail deal. Um, explain what one, a wholesale is. Yeah. So a wholesale is a, um, you know, basically just a wholesale deal mixed with like a flip. Basically it's kind of, you know, it's a little hybrid in the sense that your turnaround time from first acquisition to when you get paid on the back end is much, much less time than a traditional fix and flip. Um, you'll maybe do carpet and paint and little stuff, but you know, you're not spending more than, you know, if it's a, I didn't spend any money on mine, but you know, people will do carbon paint and stuff like that and just get it quick rehab. So it's livable and ready to go. Um, you're targeting conventional buyers. You're targeting families. When you put it on the market, the goal is to get the extra margin of being able to reach the people that can't pay with cash. Um, and so, yeah, that was the kind of intended exit strategy. And, um, it started out as a, it was an absentee list. It was, um, it was a couple that, um, had gotten divorced five years back and, um, the husband was still living in the house. So kind of not really an absentee because, you know, he's still there, but, um, it was a t text message and he responded back with, with the number he wanted, which is 120. My max offer was Real quick, so yeah, go ahead. you <laughs> you get this list of absentee owners. Uh, yeah. Where do you pull your list from? PropStream. PropStream. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. And then um, absentee owners means that there's two different types of properties. There's owner occupied, and then there's absentee. Right? They're mm -hmm. the, the houses that you live in, and the houses yeah. that you own as a rental or a second house or whatever. Mm -hmm. You just leave it vacant, right? And exactly. so you pulled. You were able to pull all the property. Did you have a certain amount of ownership? Uh, as far as like years, of, years of ownership, I mean. Uh, yeah, I usually do. Um, I do five or more. I target right before things got crazy. So I'm seeing a lot of, you know, people that bought it in 2016 and then can't believe what I'm offering them in 2022. So, right. you know, that stuff, but they bought it in 2005. So it was their personal family house for a while. Right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And then he gave and me this, the number. This, he wanted. this property yeah. was in decent shape. It just, it was one of those, yeah. whenever we, whenever you're looking at, um, and I'm speaking to the audience because I know you know this, uh, Owen. But when, whenever you're looking at a 
um, a property and you're kind of estimating the, the repair or renovation budget, there's really three buckets. It's like, well, it's in good shape. All I need to do is clean it up and refresh it. And mm-hmm. then there's, okay, this needs some work. And then there's, oh, wow, this is yeah. bad, right? These are like exactly. the hoarder houses and the houses that have had a million animals in it and a, uh, and 100,000 cigarettes smoked in it and, yeah. and all these things, right? And those are bigger mm-hmm. budgets. And if you guys need that, uh, you can go to ttpinsider.com, ttp, like talk to people, insider.com. We have a graph that shows that exactly, you know, what to estimate based on the square footage. Um, but this one is, you know, it just needs to be refreshed. Mm-hmm. They had some yeah, pride of ownership in it. Yeah, it was matter of fact, he put in like these really cool, like he spent five grand on putting new floors in like five months before I contracted it. So, I mean, like really nice appliances were already in there. Um, two car garage with like new lift on the, you know, stuff like that. Two years old roof stuff. It was really the major stuff was great. There was like a few like minor holes in the drywall. Um, just really small things that, you know, if it would have been probably, if you wanted to really do it like 10 K work max. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was just really good shape. Um, my plan was to, I could have, this was at the point where the hedge funds kind of slowed down their buying. Like they just kind of backed out of the markets. So for reference, you know, my first thing was like, okay, I could, I could wholesale this to one of the hedge funds and I was talking to them about, it. I was like, this is my plan. And then they're like, Oh, sorry. You know, we're, we're on leave for an indefinite amount of time. So I was like, all right, I got to switch plans. So I was like, all right, well, I'm going to take it down and you know, you know, I'm just going to put it on the market and, you know, patch those few holes, stuff like that. Sure. And, you know, we're going through, you know, we're titles coming back clear, all that good stuff. The seller needed, extra two weeks to be able to get his stuff together. Cause he was on the, um, he was getting ready to retire. That's why he wanted to sell it. Um, and then all of a sudden I get this text that, you know, Hey, we're back in the market is from the hedge fund rep. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, okay, well, you know, we can look at it this way. And they're like, Oh yeah, we're all on board given this price, but, um, we're actually not allowed to double close anymore. And I was like, okay, well I can't do an assignment because it's it's too big of a deal, right? So my strip strategy switches from, okay, I'm gonna take it down, patch the stuff and put it on the market to, I'm gonna take it down and then sell it to the hedge fund off market because I would net more selling it to them versus going through realtors and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, so that's exactly what I did. Um, they I closed on a Wednesday, they were in to inspect. Real quick, what Saturday. what did the what did you clo- uh, What did you buy it for? Bought it for one twenty. Okay, one twenty. And were there extra costs, escrow costs, title um, title costs, anything there? Hard money costs, private money costs. Yeah, so title was like two grand. Just it's usually around two percent. Um, and then my. Um, my private money lender, I pay him two points up front. He covered the whole purchase. Um, plus, um, I guarantee him two months interest at 11%. So, um, I paid the two points up front first round of interest, right? So that's, I think it was around $3,600 at closing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's, that's my, my cost to acquire the property was $5,600 out of pocket. Um, and then, you know, once that was just, just, just to slow this down, you bought a $120,000 house Mm -hmm. in 2022 with only $5,600 out of your own pocket. That's right. Yeah. Because of the relationship you have with the hard money lender. Yeah, and my my private money lender is literally my neighbor, so that's my main guy. <laughs> he and, and that's that's who you pulled your the the hundred and twenty from. Yep, yep. You just incredible. Wired. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, and how did wait wait wait? How did when did you talk to the neighbor and tell him, hey, oh wait, I'm I'm looking yeah. at uh, flipping this property to a hedge fund or wholetailing it to a hedge fund? Do you have any yeah. Do you have any money you want to lend me? So I had the conversation with him. Uh, it was like a neighborhood party and 
he just had sold his, um, he sold his business, a real big business, right? So he had, he has plenty of, you know, a lot of cash just sitting there. And he mentioned that he did a couple hard money loans to flippers in Orlando. And I was like, you know, you got another one right here, right? <laughs> so I asked him, I explained my model of, you know, I only do quick turnaround stuff and he was all in to try it out on this one. And I said, this is a good one to try it out with me on because it's such a great deal and there's almost no way it can really fail because I, it's, I'm buying it at 65% of what it's worth. So, you know, and we started, we went from there and we actually just started another one yesterday. Yeah. Awesome. So you were yeah. into this, you bought it for one twenty five six hundred, right? Uh, yeah. So yeah, if you want to add that 5, on. 5,600 yeah. was the closing. Yep. And uh, what'd you sell it for? Sold it for 164. 164,000. Do you remember what you net on this netted, deal? Netted 30 grand after literally, you know, I had to pay, I paid my agent 1% to manage the transaction just because I'm out of the country on study abroad right now. So I didn't want to deal with that. Um, and the hedge fund is a brokerage as well. So I had to pay them 1%. Wait a but, second, wait a second, wait a second. Yeah. You're not even in this country right now? No, I'm studying abroad in Barcelona right now. Yeah. <laughs> Making so, calls. Yeah. yeah. Doing deals. Yep, exactly. All virtual. Yeah, all virtual. Yeah, and I got... And you, I have, and you uh, net how much on this deal so I can ring this victory bell? 30K, yeah. Here we go. Come on. <laughs> that is incredible. Congratulations, Owen. Let me ask yeah. you this. Why did he sell it for 120? Why didn't he? Why didn't he? If it was a clean property and he didn't mm -hmm. have to do much to it, why not hire a real estate agent, put it on the market, and get 165 or 170 maybe for it? Um, he wanted just he wanted to be done quick. You know, he wanted the convenience. Um, and I start yeah. every every acquisitions call like after I get the lead in. You know, as soon as somebody says I want to sell quick. My response is, you know, that's great. Well, I can close quick and I'm cash ready, right? Because then I can text any of my lenders right now, say, I have a deal at X percent of ARV. Do you want to lend on the deal? And they'll say yes, and I'll tell them when to send the wire, right? So it's, it really is just, you know, cash ready. I can close whenever. And he was there for it, and he's he just wanted to move on and, He's actually building a house on the lake on one of his lots that he owns. So, I mean, he just wanted to move on, right? Listen, you go to family barbecues, you talk to the neighbors, you find out they just sold their business, you have a conversation with them. All of a sudden, you have all the confidence in the world because they're like, yeah, you find a great deal at a discount and I'll, I'll be your buyer. So now you're yeah. partnered up with these people. And you're having, you, you go on these, you go into these conversations feeling so much more certain and so much mm -hmm. more confident because you can actually close these. Because mm -hmm. Owen's 21 years old. He just turned 21 in July. He started this at 20 years old. If he can do it, you certainly can. This should be, this should pump everybody that is listening up so much and inspire so much that it's just about, Going out there and having good quality conversations with people, the sellers obviously that own these ugly houses, these distressed situations, and uh, people that have money that's just sitting around. It's amazing how much is is just sitting around, and yeah. Owen is, is just showing. There's the perfect formula. Hey, I I find discounted properties. Would you lend on it if I find one? Yeah, that <laughs> sounds good. I'll, I'll charge you two points, and you have to give me at least a minimum of two months. Awesome deal. Easy. Done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Holy yeah. cow. Owen, what do you do for your mindset? What do you do? Well, let me ask you, let, let me ask you it a little different. Right before you get on a phone with a lead, what do you do to be confident? What do you do to, to, do you have, do you have something that you get into the rhythm or, or do you just go and you just hit it before you have any time to think about it? Yeah. I mean, first it's just, you know, know what you need to know where you want the conversation to end after, before you start the call, right? Not every, most of the leads like on that first touch, after you get the lead in from text, whatever VA, 
it's not going to, you're not going to lock it up first call. That's not the norm. I would say I've had two deals like that all year. Yep. And so you need to, they need to get off that call saying, you know, this is a professional person who is reputable, has done this before, and they can either, they can or cannot fit, you know, what I'm looking for at this point. And sometimes you won't, sometimes people want retail, sometimes they, you know, there's other cases and that's fine. Um, you know, but you want to know, you want to leave an impression on them that you are someone that you, that is, you know, reputable and can work with them. But, you know, I get, I get excited going on the phones, you know, it's my, you know, that, that part of the business is like the, you know, what it is to kind of the guys on wall street or traders, right. You know, you're going back and forth with sellers, right. You're educating them how you can help. Right. And just stuff like that. So I, I don't. Yeah, I don't dread it anymore, right? I'm I'm ready to you know to this is how I can do it and you know, I love that part of it for sure. So, yeah. I love it. And mindset. Mindset, mindset, mindset. What are you doing yeah. to develop it? What are you doing to support it? What are you doing when it's a tough day? Like yeah. Talk to me. Yeah, I mean, it's I I had this conversation with um with Claude, who's helping me out, he's in the US right now, he's helping me with some of my acquisitions calls because I'm different time zone. Um, we were just like the, the amount of just like random stuff that comes up with sellers that prevents stuff from happening is like, it's almost laughable, right? So stuff goes wrong. It, and you know, no matter if you, you get rid of all the objections, you cancel out every doubt, stuff happens with like, mm-hmm. you know, some people say, oh, maybe I want to ask a realtor, you know, or just anything like that, even after the contract sign. So you need to be ready to be hit. You know, you need to be, you're going to get punched in the face in this business for sure. And it happens every week, no matter if you're in an operation like yours or just starting out, like you're going to face a lot of adversity. And it's more so just like, you just need to be ready for it and just honestly embrace it because once you get over that one, like you're gonna, the, the big deals out there, like your, your $30,000 deal is, is there. It's just, you got to push through it. But beyond that mindset, you got to be around people that are better than you in the business. And, you know, being in the, um, charged up program with Chris Jefferson, we have a huge group of people that we have people that are doing, I think seven figures now. Like they're, you know, there's people that are just starting and, you know, I learned from those people and, you know, we push each other and stuff like that. And talk, I, you know, I know people in, in your group, right. And we talk and stuff like that. Just being around people that are in the business. People yeah. Doing yeah. Seven figures. yeah, for sure. Yeah. So it's just being around the right people and just, you know, keep pushing and don't settle, you know, cause my goal was a hundred K for the year and October one came and I, I hit it and I got, plenty more under contract that, you know, I'm not done. So it's keep pushing until you're there. Right. And I don't even know what there is yet. And I haven't defined it. So it's just kind (laughs) of keeping gas pedal going. Yeah. I love it. Oh, and how can people reach out to you, brother? How can people say congratulations or maybe they want to squat up? Yeah. Um, probably the best way to reach out to me would be, um, I don't want to get, probably not my phone number, probably just Instagram. Uh, you can just do my Instagram is Owen Scott underscore six. Um, that's the best way to reach me. Um, but yeah, I'm, I, I love to do, you know, JV deals, stuff like that. And just honestly, just talking real estate is one of my favorite things to do. So, you know, everybody can, you know, do better by squatting up with other people for sure. So, um, you know, always looking to make connections and grow, myself and you know others who are pushing on this path i love it i love it congratulations owen incredible he's in barcelona right now doing deals 21 years old finishing up college early so that he could go full-time in this what a great conversation thank you so much for being on here owen yeah thanks for having me brian i appreciate it
Awesome. Um, some notes here, guys. Uh, he talked about, uh, Owen talked about PropStream. We'll put a link down below, but it's ttpdata.com, ttpdata.com. He also put, he also said something about a double close. If you're interested in learning more about what a double close is, if that's, if that sounds foreign to you, uh, check out the Brent Daniels YouTube channel. I've got uh, a few videos on that that really breaks it down real cleanly. And, uh, if you are interested in joining the most proactive community of real estate investors and wholesalers. It is the Rhino Tribe. Go to wholesalinginc.com. Go to wholesalinginc.com. Check out what it's all about. Check out the incredible community. If it feels good in your gut, sign up for a call, and I look forward to working with you personally. And that's it. Thank you, Owen, for being on here. And as always, I encourage you to go out there and talk to people. Till next time. Love you guys. See ya. 